Romania had a, a very bad history of institutionalizing kids because of the previous dictator who ran the country. It was an experiment in social engineering. So by 1989, when he was uh, tried and executed in a, in a coup, there were more than 170,000 kids living in institutions. And we were actually invited in by a member of the government who wanted to close down institutions and thought if he had science to back him up, they would be more successful. So in our case, the treatment was high quality foster care, which we had to build ourselves because there was none in, in Bucharest, Romania when we started. So we studied a large number of kids when they were babies, and we did an extensive assessment on them in many domains, brain, cognition, language, and then half of them were placed in high quality foster care and half stayed in the institution because there was no foster care for them. And we've studied their development for the last 12 years in many, many different domains. Now what's powerful about this is that we knew that over time many of the kids in the institutional group would leave the institution because we had no control over this, the government did this, but it turns out it didn't matter. If you were assigned to the institutional group and spent more than just a few years there, 12 years later you still suffer the consequences, even if you were in a family after the age of four or five, because it was where you spent those years and those first few years of life that was most critical. One reason people have studied children who are growing up in institutions is it's a way to understand what happens when the brain is deprived of all sorts of experiences. So in many institutions, babies lie in a crib staring at a white ceiling for the first year of life. So there's no visual information. There's no, nobody talking to them, no one touching them, except to change them a few times a day. So the kind of deprivation that occurs in institutional environments leads to a whole cascade of, of effects. One is that they have diminished IQ, they have lower IQ, severe language problems, severe attachment problems. They don't know how to have a relationship with an adult. As they get older, they also don't know how to have a relationship with peers. Tem exemplos já que mostram que bebês que foram cuidados só no nível da necessidade, então troca a fralda, aquece, alimenta, desenvolveram algo que foi chamado de hospitalismo, que são depressões graves, às vezes levando à morte, ou problemas de desenvolvimento bem sérios desses bebês. Né? Então, cuidar do bebê só no nível da necessidade não funda, não constitui um sujeito nesse bebê. Institutions are not new. They've been around for hundreds of years. When I was in Salvador a few months ago, we went to see uh, an institution, and it was, by all accounts, a wonderful place. It was brightly colored, there were a fair number of caregivers to take care of a, a, a number of children, whereas in Romania, there might be one person to take care of 15 kids. There, it was probably one person to take care of just a few kids. The, the people who worked there clearly were invested in the children. Um, but the fact is, those are not permanent caregivers. At the end of the day, those caregivers go home to their own families, and those kids stay in the institution. So. There are model examples, just like in Salvador, of so-called good institutions, and those kids will have much better outcomes than our kids do. They'll have more normal IQs and the like, but they'll still suffer from social-emotional problems because of a lack of a consistent person to invest in them. When families say to me, well, are you saying we should never adopt a four-year-old who spent four years in an institution? I would say, no, I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying that just be prepared that it will take more work to help that child. Uh, kids coming out of institutions are likely to, to feel like, imagine in a room of glass walls, but, and you don't know where the boundaries are, so you have to keep smashing into the walls to see where they are. So kids will test limits. So the parents are gonna have to set limits. And they're gonna have to show them that no matter what they do, they still love them. Mm -hmm.